So let's get started. So where I'm going to start here is on the Spokane Falls website because there's some information that can help you here. Down along the left-hand side, we have an e-learning link. Takes you out to here. This 24-hour help desk really is that. What it is is during business hours, you'll call and you'll actually, our office is down in the lower level of the library. Have you been there before? Um, yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, so 24 or business hours were there. The 24-hour part is that if you called that number during non-business hours, it's going to ask you if you want to leave a message. Yeah. And you leave a message, and then it goes to my. I get a, I get a notice on my cell phone that I have a message, and then I'll return it. So I do ask students to be. Uh, aware that I work an eight-hour day here, and then I'm providing a service to you, too. So if you can solve your own problems, that's great. But if you need to call the help desk, we're here for you. So how that relates to this, then, is down here is the Visit eLearning at SFCC support website. If I take you out to there, you'll see that there's a lot of good information here. Obviously, you know how to log on already. Um, but you'll also see this FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions. And so these are questions that we get into our office on a regular basis. And so we have just put them up there to get your answer. You would just click on the I, and it's going to give you the information on what we would give you even if you got us during regular working hours. So are you familiar with Angel at all? Turned in assignments? Have you posted on the discussion forum? No. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so that's frequently asked questions. Then, if I go over here to Angel Tutorials, you'll see a couple things. We have some videos on some of the basics in Angel, which is helpful if you forget somewhere along the way how to do something. So these are short three to five minute videos. There's also PDFs of the basic information that most students need. And these are screenshots as well as instructions on how to do it. Do it. So ANGEL is fairly easy for students. Um, very rarely will you run into a problem. But if you do, we're here for you. The other thing is this online class information. We update this quarterly, so as you're planning for next quarter, and if you want to take online classes, this will have spring on it, and then it'll have a list of all the classes, as well as the instructors. That's the one place that you can find who your instructor is for those online classes. OK, so we're going to close that. Go back here. So then the next thing that you'll see here is helpful links. Angel CCS is our Angel instance. The WAOL Angel, there's only a couple classes that you might ever possibly take that would be on the WAOL Angel, and that's ECED 100 and Marketing. Those are the only two we have left on that. The rest are on our Angel. So if you click on that, it takes you out. Whoops, let me log out there. It takes you out to our angel. Now, sometimes what happens is that our network goes down, the Spokane Falls network or the district network. That does not affect angel. And so it's always helpful to know what our address is. And what I tell people is it's so easy. If you can remember, of course, angel, our learning management system is angel. That means nothing but angel. CCS, Community Colleges of Spokane. So angelccs.spokane.edu. If you type that into your URL, you're going to get there eventually, or fairly quickly, actually. It helps if you put in the HTTP colon backslash or forward slash forward slash, but you don't have to. It'll take you there. The next thing is this computer check. You'll notice that there's green checks on all these. Sometimes if it's your personal computer, you'll see red X's. And it says, see red X, click the link next to it, and then it'll tell you what you need to download to make it work. What happens, though, is your computer doesn't pick it up. 
and so it'll still have a red X after you've downloaded. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and get in. It's not going to stop you from doing your classwork, nor should it. Um, I've had a few people say, well, I had red X's, so I didn't think I could go in. And it's like, oh, yeah, you can. Okay. You'll also see that public announcements, these are any announcements that affect the system wide. These are not course announcements, these are systems. So if we have to take Angel down for system maintenance or if something crashes on it, we'll put a notice up here. So, um, and we'll try and give you an idea of when we hope to get it fixed, okay? Doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's always nice to know. So you all know how to log in, but just so that you see, it's always your SID, and then your password, the default is the last four numbers of your SID, first four letters of your last name, unless you change it. We do recommend that you change it, because that just makes it more secure. But then you have the difficulty of remembering your password, right? So as long as your email is correct in the system, you can get your password. If your email isn't correct, you'll be calling our helpline to get your password reset, OK? So I'm going to log in. Mine's a little bit different. Oh, this happened to me earlier. My fingers are going too fast for me. There we go. So when you log in, you're going to see your list of courses, right? You're going to see what we call a power strip over here. And you're also going to see any course announcements somewhere in here. So if I go into my course, I'm going to actually see it more like that. It's probably going to come up like that once I change to student view. Okay. There we go. So you'll see that these items mimic these tabs across the top. And that's because this is a lot more useful than just these things. You can actually close this and get more room. There's four little arrows there that I'm clicking on to open and close it. You can change it to tasks. And so as you're going through your course, anything that's going on, you're going to be able to see in this task pane. And then if I open it up, and I select it, I can get right to it. So any of my milestones, which is my gradable items, um, or my unread mail, and so on and so forth. Okay, I'm going to close that up for right now because I don't need to see it. I'm going to go to calendar. Your instructors can link your assignments to the calendar so that they show up on the calendar. And if you hover over them, you're going to be able to click on them and go right into them. So it's just another quick way to get around an angel rather than going to lessons and searching for where you are, right? So you can do that. So when I go to lessons, this is where all your content is, all your information about your course. And so when you start working down through your course, you're going to just keep working and working. Now notice, we call this a breadcrumb trail. So anywhere I've been shows up on this breadcrumb trail. So if I wanted to go back to course information, I just click course information, OK? This can get pretty long. So I'm going along, and oh, here's a discussion forum. So I'm in, I go into the discussion forum, and I have directions on what to do, and I'll see everybody else that's posted. This is just a sample class, so I'm the only one that's posted in here. But you can see that I've got posts, and then these little plus signs here. If I click on that, it's going to show me any replies underneath that. Okay, So anywhere there. I can also open it up this way and see all the replies, and then close it back down. I can also change it to nested view, which then opens up everything, and I can read it as I go. And you can obviously how to see how to reply, and so on and so forth there. I like keeping it clean, so I'm going to change keep it at thread of view. The other thing I can do is I can come in here and say, I only want to read the ones that I haven't read, because as you well know, that as the quarter goes on, you can have three and 400 emails in any discussion forum 
or three and four hundred posts in a discussion forum. So you just want to go to the ones that you haven't read. So you can say, oh, I just want to look at the unread ones, and it would just pop up the unread ones. So a handy way to maneuver within that. So when I go back here, then I also see that I have an assignment here that I need to do. So I'm going to see the instructions on what I need to do. And then it's going to give me a place. We call this a drop box. It's going to say enter or paste your work and, cl and or click attachments to upload your files. So you're going to title it. In most cases, you're not going to see this box because we actually train the instructors not to have that message box there, just to allow you to attach. So when you attach, you're going to go out, you're going to browse to your hard drive, you're going to pick up a document, you're going to upload it. There it is, and I'm going to say finish, and now I see that document right there. And when I title it, I, so, whoops, I, I went too fast. Anyways, let me do that again. My assignment, let's attach. Oh. Load file. Oh, now I got two finished. You're going to see that now you're going to see those two files there, right? So I can see that I have the files. I haven't submitted yet. Now I'm going to submit. It's going to say your submission was received successfully. You're going to say OK. And looky here. It's going to tell me the date and the time that I turned that assignment in, as well as allow me to go back in and see those files that I turned in. OK? Now, in most cases, your instructors are only going to give you one opportunity to turn in an assignment. I have this set up so I can do it numerous times. So you can see all the times that I've turned in an assignment. I don't think I've graded myself. Yeah, I haven't graded myself anywhere along the way. But you'll then see your grades and your comments. Okay? Questions about any of that so far? No? Okay. So let's go back. Oh, let me go back to discussion forum. I'm not sure what you're asking. What was that again? Um, the English teacher said that she hasn't posted my grade online. Is that okay. okay. Yeah, I'm going to show you that, actually. There's, there's other ways to do that. So if you didn't turn something in online, but your instructor is using Angel, you would be able, let's see, let's close that out. Get back in there. Let me go back. So here's the tabs across the top, right? So under Resources, you're going to see My Grades. Okay, so I click on my grades and I'm going to see any grades that I have available. So again, that's under resources and just my grades right there. So ching, quick. I'm going to go back here to lessons and show you something else in the discussion forum. I didn't show a new post, so if I'm going to post, I can type my title, my, oh yeah. And then I would type my response in here, right? See this little blue box right there? If I open it, it's going to give me more room. Okay? And that, when you're doing a lot of typing or you have an assignment that you're copying and pasting in here, which is what we recommend in the discussion forum, you want to maybe see it a whole lot better than that little screen. So if you just click that box, it'll open it up, click it back, it closes it back down and allows you to go on from there. So that's a very, very handy tool that you might want to be aware of. So going back to that copy-paste thing, if you have a, a discussion forum that you're really thinking through your response, type it in a word processing program, create it in a word processing program, then copy and paste it into your discussion forum. The reason for that is Word automatically saves, right? So you put a lot of effort into this. What if your network goes down and you're typing in the discussion forum?
ka-ching, gone. Oh, all that work, gone. Okay, so doing it in Word, then copying and pasting it into the discussion form is really smart. Plus, it's a simpler way of doing your spell checks and any of those kinds of things. Um, you can do spell check here, but Word makes it just so much easier. Okay? So you asked about resources, so we did resources. Migrates. Communicate. If I go to my inbox, this looks a lot like Yahoo or any other email system, right? The difference being is that our email in Angel stays in Angel. And so when I go to two, I'm going to automatically get three options. All course faculty, all course individuals, all course students. I can send it, if I'm just wanting to send something to my instructor, I can just do the all course faculty, do two, and we're good to go. The individuals is both instructors and students, and of course the students. But if I, there's a particular member I want to email, I can select all members. It'll come up with a whole list of students there. You would select the student, select to, say OK, and away you go. OK? And then you can save or send from there. OK. Um, Report is more, you can run your grades from here also, so I can do grades and run, and I get the same thing as I got in resources, right, but just with a couple more steps. One thing that report does is if you have any questions about anything that you've done, you can check and see what you've done in here as well as your instructors, okay? Um, some other things that are kind of handy, the last group really found helpful. Sometimes you just don't have enough room on your screen and you wish you had just even a little bit more space. If you push F11, gets rid of all the browser stuff. Okay, so that gave me more room. And I press F11, it takes it back out. Okay, you'll also see a little blue arrow up here on the right hand corner. And if I click that, I get more room, right? It gets rid of the banner. And if I click it back, it drops it back down. Okay? Questions? No? No questions? Pretty cut and dry? Okay. Did anybody learn anything new? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Always helpful if you learn at least one thing new, right, for your time and effort. So unless you have questions, I'm done.